Hi there. I wanted to show you how Peak uses social network analysis to measure team chemistry and to discover or uncover emergent leaders on sports teams that have the ability to influence and integrate others. So what we do is we ask seven questions of everyone on the team on a survey that is done anonymously on the web. And we take the data and we illustrate it as you see in this mesh of connections and ties between players. These nodes are referencing a player and the actual connections are responses to questions. In this network map, what you see is one question, question number two of the seven, which is an on-field leadership question, uh, among the other two, which are one and three, but this is question number two. And it's at a, at a scale of four and five. In other words, we're interested more in the stronger responses to the questions that we're asking so we can measure the strength of ties between the teammates. And we can illustrate it by taking a look at how the software positions each of the players. And here what you see is this particular senior defender is sort of being positioned in the middle of the network as so is this one and this particular midfielder. What we can do with the actual analysis is then take a look at the metrics of influence and integration and see the actual measure of it. So for this particular question, this network map with these responses, we can measure and see that this particular defender had the, has the most influence. There isn't a whole lot of difference between 17 and 15 in terms of the rating, but one stands out above most others. The other thing we can measure for within that particular question is the degree of integration of teammates and who is central to integrating others. So not only are they influential, but are they reaching out and pulling others into the actual strength of the network. And what we see here is, in this particular case, the goalkeeper has the most ability to integrate because of his connections to the leaders, the senior leaders, but also others on the group. So this is an indication, one indication, by looking at one question, how we can check um, the strength of ties on the team and its team chemistry. You can combine the number of questions, the all three questions, and see what we can end up with. And you end up with a big, wide network map of the team. So collective, on-field influence and integration or leadership on the team. The best way to do this is to check out not only the influence, in other words, arrows pointing from one to the other. You can see this is a one directional. But let's take a look at symmetrical links. So in other words, if I'm responding to you on a scale of four and five, and you're responding to me on a scale of four and five, it's symmetrical. That means there is a greater degree of trust um, between the two of us. And we take a look at that, and we see that on those three particular questions, we, we can see that this particular person this defender has the most ability to integrate and influence, and so does this person. Okay, So what we can do from here is determine why this person is out here, what's happening with this person, etc. So a lot of coaches ask us then to take their starting lineup, and then let's take a look at what kind of connectivity and what kind of disconnects we might end up with. So what we end up doing is making sure that we select the lineup and then we display it like this. But what we can do is put it in the proper formation. So we take the, the defenders and we place them in their proper position or in the position they typically play in, a, in the formation that we use. So let's say it's a 4-4-2. And we place the midfielders in their position and then and we see what kind of disconnects we have or connectedness we have on the field. And so we see here that it's not, it's not bad in terms of connectivity. 
because we're looking at sort of influence networks, not looking at strictly trust levels, because like we said, we need to be connected both ways at the high level to signify a strong tie on the field. And what we end up seeing here is that on the left side, that we're somewhat weak and we're disconnected, right? In this particular case, there's some work to be done on the left side. And also between this midfielder up wide and the striker up front. But if we take a look at the symmetrical networks, high levels of trust, we might notice something different in terms of where we have some work to do. And right now, it looks like this midfielder is central to making sure that all of the activity takes place where it takes place, but we see work that needs to be done between the forwards and the, and the wingers. For some reason, we can see that we have strong ties between the goalkeeper and confidence in each other, yet we need to build these relationships between the defenders themselves. So this is a way of illustrating where you might need to take a look at in terms of building stronger ties and stronger confidence between players. And when you're making substitutions, what happens if we replace this particular player with someone else? So if we take, for instance, we replace this particular individual with uh, this particular individual, what happens? Okay, so we replace the defender with the midfielder and it might help us in a bit. And if we play the, the non-symmetrical re relationship, we see that it somewhat improves our, our midfield strength, but it doesn't help us on the left side. So there's ways to tinker with the team chemistry of the team, but also it gives you insight into what you need to do one-on-one -on -one or what you need to do once you pull a leadership group together, once identified through the leadership analysis, and, uh, and be very insightful about the decisions you make about uh, certain individuals and the lineups that you use. So there's a lot more that can be done. And if you're looking to examine your team in such a way, please don't hesitate to call us.